So it has been almost two years since I have played or watched a Paradox game. But of course, I had to make my return for Victoria 3. There's just like years worth of hype behind this. Now, unlike Hearts of Iron 4, this is not going to focus on World War 2. This is more about World War 1 and all the events that led up to that. So the US and their manifest destiny westward, maybe also their civil war, the imperialization of Africa, everyone's going to carve this continent up, the rise of communism, which might or might not start in Russia, and then of course unification from places like Germany and Italy, probably see some fascist places as well. And we start in the year 1836, and I've actually simulated this game all the way until the year 2000, which is actually way beyond the point you're supposed to go. There were some really weird things that happened at the end of this game. You're definitely going to want to watch to the end for that. Also, if you aren't already, please subscribe to the Drew Wu channel. This is my gaming channel. If I do more Victoria 3 content, this is where it'd be at. Subscribing is the best way to let me know you want more. Now, I always like to root for Texas at the start of this game. They are smashed in between Mexico and the US here, and obviously they are not very big. There's also going to be some colonization between Chile and Argentina for the rest of La Plata, I guess. There's some natives they got to take care of. Portugal and the British already start with some coastline in Africa as well, but this is definitely going to change. It's going to be a lot of European powers that begin to eat up everything over here. Now, the strongest nations to start things off are Prussia, Austria, Russia, France, and of course, Great Britain. We're going to be able to keep up with each nation's GDP, living conditions, and their rate of population. So to start things off, we actually have some interesting things in South America, finally. Peru is a puppet to Bolivia. We also have New Granada. Maybe they'll be able to bring back Bolivar's empire, or is, did that already happen? I'm going to maybe assume so, since all the flags are similar between Ecuador, New Granada, and Venezuela. Yeah, I think that whole thing just ended. So we already have both the U.S. and Mexico taking out a lot of the natives. Mexico is even moving in after the Navajo. We also have claimed Indian territory here in Oklahoma by the U.S. It's not as big as regular Oklahoma, but it's like the thick part. At least, you know, you didn't get the panhandle. Tensions are probably also rising as the Hudson Bay Company, or basically Canada, continues to also take out their natives. They're now connected fully to their Colombian district. Now, Russia sells Alaska to the U.S. in our timeline. That does not necessarily mean that's going to happen here. Who knows if they're going to keep it or sell it or what. British Raj is broken all up and we'll see if they expand it even further into Myanmar and Pakistan. I have no idea who this man is leading the US. But he is a Dixie. So uh, we got to watch those Dixies since Dixie culture will be rising up out of the deep south. Rising up might have two meanings there. Also a lot of Afro-American culture coming out of Louisiana and South Carolina. We definitely want to keep an eye on this culture map mode as a whole because this is going to change and things are going to get crazy. Of course in Great Britain we have Queen Victoria herself. She's only 22 years old and she is loved. Meanwhile, Spain is led by an 11 year old who is heavily disliked. So Bolivia has integrated Peru, forming the Peruvian Bolivian Empire. Meanwhile, Chile and Argentina are in a race for the South. Colombia holds on to Panama for now, and the US has gotten the other side of Oklahoma, but didn't label that Indian territory. I have no idea how Texas is still around. Oh, the US must have already gotten into at least one war with Mexico because we took Nevada, Utah, like parts of Colorado. Also, please tell me this border gore is not going to stay like this. The US took out these natives before Canada could, I think. And then also keep in mind is that Norway is in a personal union under Sweden. Sweden controls Norway. The British have landed in Africa and they are slowly, I think, going to make their way across the Sahara Desert. Although this is still somewhat early. I'm not sure if like colonization of this continent is really going to boom just yet. This British India slowly spreading to Pakistan. They got this somehow. Also, Spain has control over a majority of the Philippines. Almost all of it. Looks like Japan lost a pretty good chunk of islands out here in the north. Already losing a war to Russia, and there is now a war for Texas and Mexico. There is a siege taking place, at least here, maybe more. Looks like Mexico is trying to help out Texas. They brought them in, although this is already looking pretty one-sided. And now the unification of the Scandinavians. Somehow, I don't know, Sweden pulled in Denmark. Denmark already had, like, Iceland and Greenland. So this 95-year-old man has now unified Northern Europe. He's also French, by the way. This has pulled them all into the seventh strongest nation ranked in the world. Wait, did Prussia just take a huge L? Why did they lose all this? Pomerania has just popped out, which means that Prussia has dropped a bit. Yeah, they're now in 11th place. Britain also has full control pretty much over Oceania. Also, Mexico continues to lose land, and Texas was eaten. Both France and the USA have actually made it to Africa. Meanwhile, the British continue to colonize the coast. Weird that the USA is colonizing Africa. They already have, like, their strange Liberia colony right next to them, which is a presidential dictatorship currently. Chile has blocked Argentina from connecting all the way down here to this tip. Also, there's some gross Chilean borders right in the middle of all this. Britain controls the Falkland Islands, by the way. Just thought Argentina should know that. Okay, 
right, someone has got to clean this up. I'd rather the USA just completely collapse. Not only did you take out these, like, Canadian natives, but, okay, so you left Mexico with just the lower part of, what, Kansas and Colorado? Why would you do this? Scandinavia is still holding strong, even without their 95-year-old grandpa leading them. This guy is 71, and he's loved. Still French, though. Also, what's up with his flag? I've never seen that. This is also a subject nation under the empire. Egypt, I believe, took some stuff away from the Ottomans, but now the British are taking things away from the Egyptians. They've got random footholds in some pretty strong territory. We now have the colony of New South Wales here in Australia, but they are not going to unify for some reason. Wait, how did El Salvador get this piece of land? What, what kind of miracle were they pulling? So in our timeline, by 1871, we already had a Germany form up, and it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Or at least they're going to form up really late. Britain is getting huge here in the Sahara Desert, and actually in a lot of small corners of Africa. Meanwhile, France also getting pretty big above the Portuguese African territory. Wait, how did Oman get this? What? We have the epic Zulu Empire. I'm really hoping they push out the British from Cape Colony. Also, the Egyptians seem to be now struggling. The Ottomans can't push out the British, though. There seems to be a little war happening between the British and Russia pulling in Canada to attack Alaska. I think it's safe to say Russia is probably not going to sell that territory anytime soon, or at least they probably would have already done it. The Italians have technically formed up before the Germans here, and again, as I said, Prussia is still really far away from doing that, if they ever. At least got some very interesting borders, but whatever works. Wait, Italy is a senior partner in a customs union with the Netherlands. Whoa. It's actually just a personal union in general, so maybe Italy is doing a lot better than we're thinking. Okay, what happened to Bolivia, Peru? There is now a uh, uprising. Also, some very interesting cultural things happening. The Yankees continue to spread westward, whereas the Dixies are kind of stuck or they're losing stuff. How is Scottish the number one culture in Arkansas? Meanwhile, Irish is number one in Colorado. There's a bunch of Danes in Washington controlled Canada, and then the Franco Canadians are really just right here. Look at all the Afro Brazilians in this part of Brazil. English and French, I think, are slowly going to be taking over this continent as well. The Australian culture is also beginning to take over here, even though New South Wales is still just chilling, chilling with their northern island of New Zealand, too. Wait a second, we now have the East Indian Company that is formed. Meanwhile, there's a bunch of like random British Indian territory, too. This is a military dictatorship led by this 37 year old. So they have rivaled the UK. This is an independence like company nation, isn't it? I've heard a lot of things about the East Indian Company. So far, halfway through this game, these are the dominating markets of the world. Vicky 3 has a lot to do with economics. So technically, the Ottomans fall under the Italian market. So do the Netherlands, although I don't know why the color is white. British have Belgium. Meanwhile, the Spanish have the Portuguese. Ching is dominating Tibet, the Philippines, and Korea. Meanwhile, the Japanese are falling under the Austrian market. What is happening to Japan? They're struggling in this game. And here are the standards of living. Obviously, the best places to live in this world would be Europe or maybe some parts of the U.S. Although this northern state in Mexico is doing pretty good and the Caribbean. What is going on with Oman? Why is Oman dominating? Do they still have their colony? They do. Russia is also protecting them down here. There is now a communist uprising in Cuba. I'm not sure if this is the first nation to experiment with communism, but I can definitely see this one clearly. I'm not surprised that it's in Cuba either. So they have their current flag, although there's like a rip down the middle. Wait, they're communist Cuba, but they're a republic? I'm confused. Also, everyone is now eating up Africa. The U.S. got a large part of Namibia, though, and more. And I'm assuming there's only going to be more that kind of move north. I think it's France that's going to move north, maybe into Ethiopia, Egypt. A little war between Libya here. Libya is uprising on the coast. We're actually in the 20th century, and Germany still hasn't formed. I really want to say they're not going to form here. I mean, they're doing some stuff. They are expanding slowly, but it's taking a while. I'm surprised that Scandinavia is still alive. So safe to say that Upper Canada is going to keep Idaho, Oregon, and Washington. I think they would have lost that a long time ago if they were going to lose it. Britain not only took Gibraltar from Spain, but also this state from Portugal. Got a nice, like, port city. They're just, like, bullying the Iberians. Interesting flag of Prussia here. Now, can they get Bavaria on their side to get a Germany going? They do have Mecklenburg as a puppet. And we now have a communist India. A communist East India company. Wait, wait. You can't... You can't do that. You can't have a communist East India co That doesn't- I thought that would go against everything that they stand for. I'm extremely confused, but they now have this purple color. Oh, there's actually still a battle happening. Communist versus East India Company. So maybe this is going to turn into something else. They also lost this stuff in Pakistan. Meanwhile, Cuba has crushed their communist revolt. They're back in United, I believe. Or maybe they didn't crush it. They just became fully the island. Oh, wait. They have done it. Germany has managed to form, but without Bavaria. Also, 
also something really horrible is happening to Austria. A bunch of states got their independence. Finland is also free. Will we see them join the Scandinavians? If that happens though, will Scandinavia have to change their name? Because that would definitely be Nordic. Australia got their independence, but um, this, I don't know what's happening. I'm pretty sure this is like maybe a native Australia. Yeah, Aborigine. New South Wales still exists in the Northern Island of New Zealand. Also the British Republic in the Southern Island. Have the Dutch just been completely kicked off? Now we have the Dutch East Indies. Meanwhile, I believe this is all that Africa will be colonized. Did the British? Yes, the British got kicked out, kind of. There's a South Africa nation and then an uprising. The Zulu are still here. The British are trying to stomp out something in Wales. Also, Canada has been named Ontario. Also, Quebec is independent. Several horrible things happening in this part of South America. Also, Madagascar managed to not get colonized by the French. No Soviet Union in this world. Russia remains a czar. Well, kind of. They're a constitutional empire, so maybe not. Oh, there was a communist uprising in Wales and the UK is just not gonna do anything about it yeah they're just watching the it's just the constitutional duchy that's trying to fight that meanwhile Austria just keeps looking weaker and weaker it looks Britain has a really weird flag I I don't know what they've done. Please get rid of this weird Hungarian flag. Oh my goodness, is that what I think it is? Is that the icon I think it is? Okay, how long has Germany been a military dictatorship? Also why? I'm afraid to look into this anymore. This guy's a Catholic. He is disliked. Um, no skinny mustache, though. Oh, the world really does not like Germany. Italy, on the other hand, is just a constitutional republic. Okay, so we have no-no Germans in this world. That's great. I don't know how no-no they are. They don't look that powerful. They look pretty broken. Also, Spain still has control over the Philippines. Huge messes now occurring in France and Spain, even Bavaria. Austria continues to get more pathetic. Has the fall of Scandinavia occurred? Everyone in North America is still pretty much fine. But yeah, there's like uh, forever uprisings because I think we've gone way beyond the game, like what the game intended at least. Siam was getting pretty big for a second there. East Indian Company is back to just being a presidential dictatorship. No communism there. Which actually, Germany is just a republic now. They got rid of that old no-no flag. Spain has cleaned up their mess, but the same can't be said for France or Wales for that matter. Oh, and Scandinavia has also crushed theirs, so they're back to normal. Dixie culture still dominates in the south, and it actually has kind of expanded into Arizona and Colorado. Also, Afro-Americans taken out of Louisiana, now just in Virginia and South Carolina. Yankees now stretch into modern-day Canadian lands. Meanwhile, South Italians have taken over Idaho. <laughs> just sounds so crazy. Oregon and Washington. Northern Italians are now in Quebec. Franco-Canadians still kind of around here, just a little weaker. Here's the same cultural map mode for South America. Yankees and English, kind of the bigger names in Africa, but not that huge. There's not a whole lot of French. I mean, the French tried to convert them to their culture, but it wasn't really working. Scotland is slowly being chopped away. It's just like this province. Norway has no more culture. It's just Danish. Most of Australian culture is just Aboriginal or Maui for the South Island of New Zealand. Love that there's just Mexicans randomly in Colorado and Kansas just at this part. Global GDP or at least the high value regions really just Central Europe, Italy, Germany. If Germany controlled all this, I think they would have won this game. How did the UK fall so far? They're now in the American market. Also, France as well. They're completely divided. Canada is in the Italian market. Yeah, if you're not big enough to be in your own market, you're, you're struggling. Uh, most of South America is under the American market too. Persians ended up doing pretty good, getting like Egypt and these colonies under them. Even Portugal in the Persian market. Wait, why is Japan divided? There's a revolutionary Japan that formed up against the Japanese shogunate. I don't how the shogun is still dominating Japan in the year like 2000. Also, what's the difference? We have a Japanese shogunate here, and then we have an, the uprising, which is just an absolute empire. It's literally a government where the power rests entirely on the emperor or empress. Oh, I see. So there's maybe more things. There's still that class system for the shogun. In terms of the migration map mode, most places are leaving Europe and they're moving to Persia. <laughs> they're also moving to a lot of Africa. They're getting out of Tennessee, but they're also moving to other states. Russian Alaska is a very very nice vacation destination, I guess. Southern part of South America is good. Northern part, not so much. So the top 10 nations here, we have Ontario, the British Republic, Austria, Russia, the Octa the southern part of France uprising, then regular France, the East Indian Company, Germany, the United States, and then Italy. Italy is number one. They certainly don't look number one, but when we looked at that Italian market map mode, they were huge. Italy has somehow won this game. They've just chilled as a constitutional empire this whole time. This guy's 92 years old. Wow. They clearly got 
got some black magic on their hands in. Oh, they've got custom unions with Bahrain, with Greece, with Africa Nation, Ontario, and then Quebec. Also, Hedjaz is one of their puppets. All right, clearly this was a very strange world. I'm gonna have to try to come back and maybe play with some mods. I'm sure, that's gonna make everything more freaky. And big thanks to my patrons. A fat Norwal. Presented by Robert My wife e. hates this Sebi, part. if you hear this, Kilgore I love you, Drew's daddy. Drew's Argentinian grandpa. $20 is Yana, a wild Bring fan. back Chris Poland Ball. Checky a ball. Danny the Evan, Gay Good old Ryan. Lugsy I stole Lover. Drew's pet dog. Jack Fresh. Fresh. Patrick. Animation. Or the Polish. Ryan. Why am I doing this? The Mexican. And Zany Boy.